All right, what's going on everybody? So I believe that if you're watching this video and you really internalize what I am about to talk about and pray about it and catch yourself as you are witnessing the world around you, I believe that you will really position yourself for a better year and for a better life ahead and that you would really break free from this bondage that has captivated so many people across the world. And what you have to realize in society today, especially, is that because of the internet, because of just peer pressure, because of social activity and just the elevation in our ability to communicate, to understand language, to uh, empathize with people, that a lot of us, we are caught up in a cycle for which if you are not careful, if you're not guarded, if you don't have an objective point of view in a situation, in a conversation, in a group of people, then you are going to be swept up into that movement, that direction, that emotion, whatever it is. And I just want to speak out of Scripture. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, I'll start there. Uh, but it's referring to uh, the previous uh, few verses where it talks about submission and honoring your masters. In verse 3, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, uh, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain from such withdraw yourself. And what you have to realize is that whether you are in a small group in person with your family, your friends, whether you are on uh, an internet forum, on Twitter, on some Reddit post, or if you are even in the comments, I see this all the time, even in the comments within my videos and just all over just the internet, right? Is that once some discussion, once some words start up, a lot of people they tag onto that. And this bandwagon effect of an emotion and a direction for which people don't realize it, but there's a spirit behind it. And often a demonic spirit for which your flesh overwhelms. And because people want to align themselves with that same thought, with that same fleshly desire, it's getting them caught up into this sort of cycle of tagging on to each other and just uh, bantering off each other. And if you're not careful, you're going to be swept up. And a lot of people, they hear something that uh, itches their ears and they say, oh yeah, this, this guy is that, or this view is that, or why don't you hate this, or have an, a, an opinion about this. And then somebody else will come in and just say, oh yeah, that's right. And they just kind of use each other as a sounding board to kind of amplify that message. And before you know it, you have people just disputing, arguing, uh, tagging off of each other, and you have this amplification of a movement, of an emotion, of a thought or a feeling that was planted from an, uh, an evil place, from a fleshly place. And so that's why you have to be very careful that when you inject yourself, recognizing that there, there's a spirit behind it. When you go into a room and people are just angry and upset, a lot of times, if you're not guarded, you go in there and you also get angry. You're like, oh, yeah, I can't believe that person did that. Oh, what? Oh, I, and you just kind of align yourself and empathize with their emotions. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't uh, be understanding and empathetical and try to reason and, and get their point of view. But if you latch yourself at, in your fleshly emotions with that person and then you become uh, one-sided for which you're pointing at somebody else that they're talking about, you, you take their side and say, oh yeah, I can't believe he did that or she did that. Oh, that, that person is at fault for their divorce or, or their issue, whatever it is. And you become so attached to that movement, that comment thread, that person, that viewpoint, whatever it is. And you're going to be caught up with this uh, obsession over disputes and arguments over words with envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings, all these things that 1 Timothy 6 is talking about. And I'm saying this because these are the basics. These are the basics to, to acting, to reacting, to communicating, and making sure that you are interacting with the world in a proper manner. But so many of us, we've been uh, caught up in the ways of the world, not recognizing that there's a, there's a spirit behind it. And just because it may or may not be right 
how uh, the, the person may be using a partial truth may, uh, and, and just latching onto that and then amplifying it with negativity, right? Bad words, bad thoughts. These people that want to align themselves with factions, with sex, as the Bible talks about, many different groups, you are letting your emotions go and you're allowing this to come over you and then you just kind of go with it not realizing that you let your guard down not realizing that the the negative emotions the negative thoughts overwhelm you and then the devil has a grip on you and then you become open to other things for which you get easily triggered easily angered you have a preconceived notion a bias you have a partiality you get slighted by that person that movement that uh, whatever they're associated with and this becomes then a spiral effect for which then you get more and more into an ungodly, a not Christ-like uh, outlook on the situation, the person. You don't act in love and in grace. And so I'm saying this as a, a word of caution and warning, but to really be on guard in this season, whether you are interacting with family, whether you are interacting in the forums, in the comments, uh, doing your own thing as you, you're going out with strangers, whatever sphere of, of circle and influence you have, whether it's closer, whether it's further apart, you have, you have to have an objective, balanced, uh, biblically sound uh, uh, with doctrine, with just an outlook and a perspective that is not wavered by the ways of the world, by the emotions and thoughts and feelings and the direction of whoever it is that's trying to influence you. And because uh, a lot of people, they, they start with the smallest things. I, I've seen people come through even my comments because I, uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I could follow it a lot. But some people come in, they kind of start slow. Suddenly, they're just with a certain group, amplifying the voice, and they just become attached to that sort of mindset, whether it's an angry mindset, whether it's a, uh, a disdain, wh whatever that is. And they just end up going with the flow of that, not realizing that they don't have an objective, uh, a, a rooted in, in biblical, loving, graceful, merciful way for which they can view a certain topic a certain viewpoint, a person, whatever it is. And so I say this not just as a way to defend or look at myself in this channel, but rather this is the same direction that a lot of people in the world are going. And I'm only using what I am most familiar with and have experienced. But for other people, as I see Twitter, as I see just different uh, interactions, other videos, other people, other channels, I see that the same spirit that is operating in these people are taking bondage, captivity over these people. And they don't realize that they are in bondage and they're just going into this cycle and in this spiral and they're just uh, being taken over by the bandwagon effect, by the crowding effect. They don't have their own root, their own discernment, their own reasoning, their own righteous uh, aspect. And they're men uh, and women of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth. And so they... Uh, Bible, the last verse says, from such withdraw yourself. And so that's how I want to end it, right? If you are caught up and you don't have the maturity, the rootedness to be able to really have self-control over your words and not be picked up by the movement. You get into a room, everybody's angry, and then you just start getting angry and you, you don't know why. Uh, you don't have self-control yet. And so you have to withdraw. The Bible says you have to withdraw yourself from that situation because if you're not strong and, and uh, able to either take command rebuke that spirit or be able to influence that room in a positive way, then you have to remove yourself from that. I'm not saying you should always, uh, if you're mature, you have to tackle things head on. Allow the Lord and the Holy Spirit to work through you. But what I'm saying is that this spirit is all over for every topic, every issue, every emotion. And if you're not recognizing it and you're not able to fight it in Jesus' name and you're not able to act correctly and be led by the spirit, then you're going to be like uh, the chaff in the wind in this hour. And so I just want to give you guys this word, however this uh, applies to you, whatever it means to you in your life with other people, your interactions in your workplace, other channels, forums, other uh, interactions uh, in different places, different mediums, you have to realize this spirit. You have to realize where you are in respect to uh, these other people and the issue, the topic at hand. So I just want to give you guys this word of encouragement because if you really recognize it, you begin to see it you begin to fight it, and you begin to take yourself to a level for which you can then uh, uh, pray against, you can influence, and you can be the one that is dictating some of the flow. Then we have, we will have uh, Christians, we will have like-minded people all over trying to then change this atmosphere.
But until then, if you have to, just take yourself away from everything. Stop commenting. Stop talking to people. Stop getting into frivolous arguments and disputes over these things. And you have to be led by the Lord. So just wanted to give you guys this word. Love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.